Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So recently I've had a lot of people reach out with issues building Marlin firmware with VS Code. Really just a lot of issues with compiling the code, just a bunch of errors coming up and such. So I figured now would be a good time to talk about a different option. There's a site that's based out of Australia. Uh, you do have to donate in order to use it, but it's not that expensive. It's like $10 a year, um, but it allows you to download the latest builds for some of the Creality printers um, just daily. And it also has a custom firmware builder in it. Uh, basically it allows you to just select buttons for the different features you wanna be able to enable and it does all of the building for you and gives you the firmware output. So I'm gonna go through an example of how to use that site here. It's a good option if you wanna save some time or if you're having issues building your own firmware. If you have any questions about what I'm covering or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. I think the next video, I have a new laser engraving kit that I'm gonna use, so I'll show you that. And then uh, I have a couple other videos on some new hardware that's being shipped to me, so uh, stay tuned for that as well. All right, guys, so here's the site I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Um, it is an Australian-based site. You can see here from the URL, uh, but I'll link to this in the description below. Um, you do have to have a membership. So if you are if you don't have a membership, you go up here, create an account, and then in order to be able to download the builds or create your own custom builds, you have to uh, donate. Uh, it's $15 AUD, I believe, which ended up being like $10.40 or something USD. And that gives you one year of membership or one year of downloads. Uh, so it's not expensive. It's just really to help support the servers and everything that I use for the build process. So I was okay with that. So if you want to just grab the daily build for specific printers, like here, the Ender 3, if you have the SKR Mini V3 uh, with the BL Touch, you would just go here and just download it and just choose the one you're looking for and just hit download. Um, and then you can go ahead and just take that bin and put it on your SD card. Now, if you are using the SKR, you will want to rename that to uh, firmware.bin. If you're using one of the Creality boards, you can use the file name as is, just can't use it multiple times because it will result in a blue screen. But if you go in between different builds, you can see here that the name does change. Uh, so this is the date of the build. It creates new builds daily, uh, which is nice. I did want to make a note here that if you're having issues with these builds or you aren't in a position that you're able to donate, I do have builds available on my site you can download for free. I have a lot of different variations of the Creality uh, printers here. Uh, if there's anything missing that you guys would like added, just let me know. I try to update these as often as I can. Uh, they're not going to be daily builds, but they are at least builds that have been uh, tested and are mostly stable. Uh, some of the newer bug fix ones aren't exactly the most stable, so some features might be uh, broken on it, but the basic functionality tends to work fine. Uh, so these are always available for you guys to download for free. Um, but if you need custom builds, this was the main reason why I wanted to do this video. You go back over to here, go to your custom firmware builder, and you can see here your history for the last seven days and number of credits you have. Uh, these credits, they say they reset after 72 hours. So if you're using them and you run out of credits for whatever reason, if you have a lot of builds, uh, they do reset. It's just more of a way to control the load on the servers. Uh, but anyways, go to create new. Let's go to walk through the process. Uh, select the manufacturer so they only support Creality. Uh, then go down, let's say we're using the Ender 3 Pro uh, with the SKR Mini uh, V2 board. So we'll just go ahead and select that. And then you can adjust your all your settings through here. Um, so basically your hot end, whether you have a stock hot end or one of these other ones, your hot end temperatures. Basically, this is everything that you would see in the configuration file, like your drivers and all of that, uh, just in a user interface that you just check the box instead of having to uncomment or comment them out. And then for display, if you have the stock display, you'll keep this. If you have like the Creality V2 display, you'll choose this one. Uh, but they have a couple different options here to support different displays you may have. If you're going into your speeds, you can set your max speeds here. Uh, PID tuning, it enables it by default. Your filament options. So if you have a run out sensor, you would enable that here. It kind of gives you some information on what it's actually doing. So this would be the code you'd actually be commenting. Um, the main advantage here is you don't have to do anything in VS Code and you're not gonna get the errors on the build because they're building it on a server and just providing you the download. So let's say we enable the filament sensor. Uh, it's not gonna be the motion base and then whatever you have set for high or low for 
uh, the signal, and then bed leveling if you enable BL touch. Uh, I like to use probe for Z homing. And then you have a couple different uh, probe options as well here. Bed leveling method, switch over to bilinear. And then you can set your grid size. Uh, for the Ender 3, typically 3x3 is fine. If the build plate's really worked, you can switch it to 5, so it'll be a 5x5. Five five. I know some people have done that. I like to enable the Z offset wizard, um, baby stepping. And here I have a video actually covering this one, but if you want to, uh, to kind of test the accuracy of your uh, BL touch or whatever probe you're using, you can enable this uh, so that you can get the variations and make adjustments as needed. And then they have some of the other additional features here uh, if you wanted to enable any of those. Uh, but like I was saying, it's basically the configuration file all into one user interface that you just toggle things on or off instead of commenting them out. Uh, the important thing here is once you've made all your changes, go down to build firmware and it's going to queue it up and build it for you so you don't have to worry about installing VS Code or really going through um, any of the plugins or worrying about any of the additional settings it kind of just does it all for you uh, so for ten dollars a year i think it's very reasonable then once the file is done you can just go and hit download firmware and it will download it for you you can just put that on your sd card uh, put it in your printer and uh, power it on and it should read it in now if you're using a Corality board and you get a blue screen, just keep in mind the SD card should be 8 uh, gig or less and format it as FAT32 and the file name can't be the same as a previous one. And then once that's done, you can go to hit continue and you can go back to some of your previous builds as long as it's not more than seven days out and you can re-download the firmware again if you needed to for whatever reason, if you're testing different firmwares and going back and forth between them, uh, you can do that. So I just wanted to go over this as an option for uh, those of you who are struggling to build your own firmware. Uh, this is a very viable option, uh, not too expensive, and it's easy to use overall. If you have any questions about what I covered here or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks. All right, guys, so that covered the custom firmware builder. Um, as you can see, it was pretty easy to use. You don't really have to do much. You just select the different items that uh, you want to enable or disable and hit build, and it gives you your firmware. Um, the only downside is, is it's, it does have a little bit of a cost. Uh, like I said, it's not much. It's like $10 a year, so less than a dollar a month. Uh, really, I think that's just to help support the hardware that's required to uh, run the build. So it's not cheap for them to be able to host that. And as a reminder, I do have custom firmware builds on the site. And if I don't have anything that you're looking for, just let me know. I can build one and add it there for you to download. And if you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, like always, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.